In this lesson, we'll introduce you to getting data into Manifold GIS. We're going to cover importing vector data, importing surface data, importing image data, linking images, and assigning projections and actually projecting geographic data. To begin the lesson, we're going to create a new Manifold project. The data we use is located in the data directory on your training CD. The first thing we'll do is bring in vector data. Under the File Import menu, select Drawing. We'll import some shape files. Again, navigate to your training directory. I've placed mine on my C drive. And then under Data, we're not going to look at DXF files. Instead, we're going to choose the type SHP for ESRI shape files. Let's bring in some roads. This file, roads L, is a line file of roads in our study area. The first dialog shows the attributes that we can import as well. We can import none of them, all of them, or some combination. Once this file is imported, you can double click on the roads drawing and actually see the component. You can see that the file is an orthographic projection. If we right click on the drawing, we can go to properties and you'll notice the precision as well as the projection and the zoom dependencies. Okay, let's get some other data into our project. Under File, Import, choose Drawing again. Now we'll bring in some ESRI export files, or E00 files. You can see all the different file types that Manifold can import. Let's choose the hydrology and this NYE00, which represents the Statsco soils for all of New York State. When we bring in E00 files, it actually creates a number of components for points, lines, polygons, and then a basic map component that assembles them all together. We're not going to need all of them, so we'll get rid of a few. To do that, click on the arcs, the centroids, as I'm doing here, and holding down the shift key, the labels. We want to keep the polygons, but we don't need the map. And then hit the delete button to delete the components. And now they're gone. As we open it up, you can see the New York poly drawing of the Statsco soils, and it's kind of tilted. This is because it's in the Albers projection. And here's the hydrology, which is a new TM. The next thing I'm going to do is open up Excel. There's a file in your directory that represents the boundary of our study area. And it's called boundary. We have a column for the x-coordinates, the y-coordinates, and the line number. And this line number represents an, a unique line number that each of these coordinates are part of. So again, under File, we'll go to Import, and then Drawing. But this time, we'll change the type to Excel, or XLS. And we'll select Boundary XLS. Again, it shows us the columns we can import. So we'll bring in all three. But under the bottom, we're going to type line ID is going to equal to the line num. And as we bring that in and double click on it, you'll see it's actually created a box of each of the coordinates and connects all of them together based on that line num column. 
All right, let's bring in a surface. So in this case, we're going to go to File, Import, and then Surface. We'll bring in a USGS DEM, and that's U27ELU.DEM, and that represents the digital elevation model for the Ithaca East Quadrangle. This has 1.4 million pixels, so it's a pretty large file. If you double click on the component in the project menu, the surface will be drawn. Here you can see the digital elevation model. Finally, let's link an image. Go under File, Link, and then select Image. We're going to bring in an ERMapper ECW file. Linking actually reads data from a file in another location rather than bringing it into the project. And we'll choose the Ellis Hollow 83 ECW. That's an ECW image of our project area. There's a, a few digital ortho photographs that were joined together. And here, as you double click on it, you can see the actual image. Here we'll just tile each of our components so you can see all the components drawn together. And as you click on each one, you can see the different coordinate systems. Here, Ellis Hollow is using Universal Transverse Mercator. The Hydrology is using Universal Transverse Mercator as well, as is the DEM. Here we're using Albers for the soils. We don't know the projection for the chords table, or at least it's not defined, and the same for the roads drawing. So what we're going to do next is right-click on the Coords 2 table and go to Projection. Now it defaults to orthographic because we really don't know what it is, but in fact I know which one it is. It's in the UTM Zone 18 projection with the NAT83 datum. So we're going to hit click on Current Projection. And here you're going to see that when Manifold does it, uses this new projection to interpret the current coordinates. So it doesn't change the drawing. We're basically just defining the projection to tell Manifold where this data actually resides. So we're going to scroll down to Universal Transverse Mercator, and then go down to Zone 18. And here I need to scroll on my datums and select North American Datum of 83. When I hit OK, now the data is defined. When we click on this table, look at the bottom, and you'll see we're now in Universal Transverse Mercator. So we've actually defined our projection. Let's do the same thing for the roads. We'll right click again, select Projection, and again hit Current Projection. This is important. If you don't hit Current Projection, you'll actually change the coordinate system from what it thinks the current one is to the new one. So here we'll select UTM Zone 18. And we'll select our datum. And hit OK. OK, so that also is now defined as UTM. We saw in the last exercise that Manifold will actually mix and match coordinate systems on the fly, but in this case, let's actually reproject one. So we'll take New York Poly and right click on that, and go to Projection. It's in the Albers projection, it knows that. So what we want to do now is actually transform the coordinates, and this is going to change the drawing. So in this case, let's go to UTM Zone 18. And again, we'll go to NAD 83. And when we select OK, we're actually projecting the data. Remember what the component looked like. So we're changing the coordinates now from the Albert system to UTM. So it's now in UTM, and let's zoom to the full extent. 
So we zoom to fit. Now you can see New York is in a more orthographic position. That's based on the UTM coordinate system. What we'll do now is create a map. So back in the project pane, you can select the Create button, drop, drop it down, and then select Map. And this is going to create a new map component. We can turn on each of the layers and assemble them all into one map component. So we hit OK and then double click on the map. You can see all the layers superimposed on one another. Now in this case we're zoomed all the way out to the project extent, so let's or the whole extent of the state. So let's zoom into the project. And here I've got the New York polygons sitting on top of everything. So I'm going to slide that all the way down. And now we'll zoom in a little further. And you can move the other tabs around uh, however you like.